um, I, I told him I was at the intervention and I spoke with him uh, face to face. Uh, so I was able to tell him um, and it was really rough, um, but he took really well to it at the time. Um, but yeah, um, I just want to say thank you to Pokey for like breaking the, the street, like the, you know, the, it just felt very hard to go live. And I was like, what are you guys going to say? I don't know what to say. So I've been dreading, uh, dreading saying anything. And I battled with just saying nothing. I was like, okay, I could just go live and be like, hey, not going to address it. Peace. Uh, yeah. But like I said, um, Fed has been a part of my life and I did want to just touch well, not even touch, just just go into some things that my experiences with him. Um, and a lot of this is nothing to do with the sexual assault stuff going on. And this is just him as a friend to me um, and, and ways that I actually just I didn't realize were toxic at the time. But um, yeah, just and I think that it gives me it'll give me closure. So I, I don't want to add um, don't want to add fuel to the fire. Um, I just want to um, support my friends right now. And uh and yeah, I guess just kiss to, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna be really bad at speaking because I'm, I've never really talked like this in front of people. I don't think, I think this is the first time I've brought like an issue with a friend up publicly, like like publicly. A lot, I've dealt with friends stuff privately. Like this is as if like when I think about it, like the just friends boom, like if I had to like come on stream and talk about like the, luckily like just friends didn't explode to the point of like, you know, we kick someone out or like, I don't know, but it, I never wanted to speak on that and I still haven't spoken on it, but this has gotten to the point where it has to be public address. It's all out there. And so I have permission from everyone I'm going to speak about to include them where in their, in my stories. And so, yeah, anyways, who is fed? Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I'm not going to go that far deep in lore. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just been really rough. Yeah, since the whole like stuff with Albert happened last year and then, you know, it's just like, what is going on? It feels really sad. It's just like, it's so weird. I just I was talking about Edison. I was like, in a normal like friend group, this is not how things go down. You know, it feels like every time I lose a friend, it's like this, pff, all these emotions, so much hurt. Like, I don't know. It's just like the public has, weighs in and imagine like, losing a friend and seeing your friends get hurt by your friend but also having like the public opinion weigh in on your friendships and like you see people who are so incredibly wrong about like like your best friends and like making these accusations and like oh my gosh imagine that like the feelings we were i was oh we were all going through were like uh, we were raging behind the scenes so i just was trying to balance my emotions with everything because it's been really like really really frustrating anyway so <clears throat> so <laughs> i totally i'm sorry yesterday i was watching pokey stream she was clearing her throat like a lot like <clears throat> you know <laughs> totally understand <laughs> that k drama nothing but five good subs <laughs> it's a thing you have a lot of emotions you're like shaking a bit and her hand i think was shaking a bit i'm shaking a little bit <laughs> And um, anyways, so like I said, it's uh, I would like to say my things um, are not on the severity of what other Lily Pokey uh, Yvonne came out with. This is just my personal stuff um, and it will give me, I think, get, uh, when I considered sharing it, I realized it would give me closure to share it with the whole situation. And I haven't even quite figured out my own feelings with everything. Uh, so I don't actually know how to con like tell you guys exactly how I'm moving forward and we're moving forward and all this stuff because I, I haven't actually figured it out myself because in between all of this, I've been like filming a sponsored video and prepping. Oh, I just oh, had to, last night I was editing my video, I'm like, but I got distracted by Reddit, like every other thing. I stopped to watch Pokey stream and then I'm like, so many emotions. Type, 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 type. So, anyways, yeah, Vim Pepin Meltdown. Anyways, <clears throat> beginning. So, um, all right. So, I guess I'll just start. I want to share my stories with how Fed affected me personally. Um, and so fed and i um uh, we met back in 2017 and everything like i've been dating edison since the beginning of before we met so i never had any like real like when i hear about the stories that fed has with other girls i experience probably the least of it all in terms of flirtatiousness or just like him making any kind of yeah sexual advance that that was me and him very nothing almost i have a few but it's really um 
in my opinion i don't think it's near like nothing um so um anyways i grew to trust him a lot because fat as you guys know is the kind of person who like he makes you feel special because he comes over to your place, right? He doesn't, he's a guy like, oh, Fed's in my room. He just like opens a door. He comes over, like opens the front door, comes into, you guys are like always got that vibe, right? When we're at Just Friends, like wherever I lived with Kimmy, with Jamie, um, we, he always was just there. And it was kind of like, aw, he cares so much that he just like is in my room all of a sudden. And it was just like, that was just the thing that Fed did. So I grew to trust him a lot. Um, he would come over and there was a day I even remember, he just came over and he had, a, I could tell he had a lot on his mind and he just like came over to my room. It was in the morning and he's like, what are you doing today? I was like, I, I don't know. And he's like, wanna hang out? And I was like, sure. And I'm like, what does that mean? Wanna hang out? But I was like, sure. So we literally just hung out in my room the entire day, 12 hours straight doing work. We just did work. It was, he just, and we'd look up at each other and we're like, and so there's nothing weird about this in my opinion. I was just like, okay, he's super random. That's just fed things. But I grew to trust his physical presence, like wherever he was, um, you know, cause we had just sat there uh, in my room and just, yeah. So uh, this is just, you know, we're building trust um, all, all this time. Okay. And so I'm going to share a story um, that I have permission with uh, Jody's, J Jody gave me permission. Um, so after Shroomer Camp, uh, season one, um, so I, I, I don't think this was ever shared, um, but me and Jody had a rough patch. Like we didn't click, we didn't get along uh, right away after Shroomer Camp. And uh, this was never made public. Um, uh, we, we have since talked it out and we are on really great terms. We have, I talked to her in person about this. We've talked, I talked to her yesterday. I talked to her throughout this process. We're good. <laughs> but during, and I'm not gonna delve into why or whatever, that's not important. Um, but during this rough patch, um, Fed was very aware of it. So Jody has basically been in like uh, talking with everyone for like two months at this point, uh, beginning of 2018, right after Shroomer Camp. Um, and um, Fed, Fed has been my friend for you know a while at this point. I trust him a lot. Um, and he calls me and he's on the phone with Yvonne, him and Yvonne. He calls me knowing like just stuff is going on in my mind about Jody. He calls me and he's like, hey, like, just want to let you know, like, I'm on your side. I'm a hundred percent behind you, no matter what. Like, you're my homie. You're my bro. Like, like I like a hundred percent. Okay. And I was like, thanks, Fed. Like, that means a lot. That's really sweet. And Edison was next to me, and I was like, thank you. Like, um, I'm, I really just want to work through my feelings about everything. And he was so incredibly supportive. So, I, I he's like, okay, like, just want to say, like, um, I'm on your side. And like, he would say, he, he, yeah, essentially just. Oh, so aggressively supportive of me. He called me to tell me. So I hang up and I'm like, okay, like I'm just trying to work out my feelings and yada yada. The next day I go on Twitch and I look at, see this, I don't know if this is all petty or whatever. I look, I go on Twitch and I notice he's on a call with Jody, like flirting out of his mind with her. This is when like the Fody thing was happening. That like, that was like, yeah. So he had been uh, super flirtatious with her that day uh, on a call with her and then he ends the stream and he hosts her. And then um, I was like, wow, um, it's not a huge deal. It's just like that kind of feels like a slap in the face because you were like you you went out of your way to call me to tell me like you got my back. Like why? Like I wouldn't care if you didn't go out of your way to tell me that. But why would you why would you call me specifically to tell me that? Like and then like not not follow up on your word whatsoever like what so i i didn't i it's my bad for not just telling him in the moment what what the heck i just i just suppressed and i was like okay move on whatever about a week later i want to say a week or a week and a half later i'm ending stream oh he texts me while i'm streaming and he's like hey what are you doing after stream i was like uh nothing he's like all right i'm gonna come over and i was like oh uh sure whatever he's like i'm bored i'm gonna come over so fed comes over and um yeah, he, he comes over, he's like, uh, he has a bottle of Ciroc randomly. And I was like, oh, and he's like, yeah, you want to drink? And I'm like, uh, I'll take like a shot or two. And so we just sit there and we just drink a little bit. We weren't like fucking drunk or anything. We just, we, we had, we were just talking. And so nothing happens. Obviously we're just talking, but it does get to the point where I'm sharing a bunch. I'm sharing my frustrations with Jody again. And um, I'm kind of like, I wasn't straightforward and told him like, why did you do what you did last week? You know, um, but uh, he's like, once again, 
I got your back 100%, you know, like um, basically the same words, completely like supportive. I was like, okay, okay, he's he's on my side again. All right, thank you. Um, and so I was really like opening up to him about everything. I remember I was like pouring out my heart. I was like, blah, 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 blah. This and this and this is frustrating. I don't really remember what I was saying, but I know that I was like mid rant. And he looks at his phone and then he starts like texting and then he gets like super dismissive of me like i can just tell he's like uh-huh uh-huh yeah and he's just texting and he's just constantly looking at his phone and i'm like okay like don't then if you're not gonna listen to me just don't listen to me like so i started to just stop talking and then i was like okay anyway uh he's like oh my uber's here by the way i'm gonna go i'm like really tired i'm super tired i'm gonna go to bed and I was like, oh, okay, if you're tired, you're tired. And he's like, yeah, but like, I'm on your side. I like 100% support you. So I was like, okay, okay, bye. And within two minutes, he's out. And I'm just like there, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> okay, I feel really off about that, but whatever. So I call Kimmy, cause I was bored. And I'm like, Kimmy, wanna hang out? And she's like, yeah, I'm down. So she comes over, she drives over and then she picks me up. And then I was like, let's go to Edison's place. And um, at, at the time, if you guys don't know, Edison's living with Jody and um, Albert, uh, Boxbox and Sean. So Kimmy comes to pick me up and we go to Edison's place and, and I, like, we just pop in as a surprise. Like, hey, Edison, I walk in and I see Fed, like first thing, Fed in Jody's room. I was like, hey, Fed. <laughs> and yeah, and he just like, oh, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I... <laughs> what are you doing here i thought you had to go to bed and he's like oh uh like i changed my mind and stuff and then so yeah okay so i was just really really like i was really really burned in that moment once again this is all like seems very petty um i uh it just i'll just tell you this is where my trust in him never was never the same ever because i like why you know it's just why would you ever do that super fake yeah he he's he just tells me what i want to hear like why would you do that why would and that he's just lied in my face yeah so after that i never trusted him fully again so i had a really tough time telling this to him, his face by the way like when i was saying this i was like shaking because i i had held this in for a while I, I just didn't know how to tell him that yeah i didn't know how to tell him this because i didn't yeah okay um anyways we we just patch things up i just kind of suppress 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 fed is a great guy fed's a great guy everyone loves fed so so uh so i can't have any problems with him because if i bring up any issues with him i don't want to cause a wedge in this friend group everyone's so great everyone loves fed so just fed things you know whatever so that's how i coped uh, i cope with everything i just said wow that felt really bad wow what a what a horrible thing to do but yes okay anyways just fed things that's a very recur reoccurring thing in this so I suppressed that and it had been on my mind. Um, I had actually brought this up to multiple people. I, I talked to this exact situation. I probably told this story like 10 times now to close friends and each of them were like, wow, like, okay, that makes sense. Cause I didn't know where my friendship with him started to shake. Um, anyway, so, um, so from here I have like smaller stories. So in 2019 last year, this is October, 2019, we're all chilling. Um, and Fed comes up to me. Uh, we're all like having like deep talks and stuff. Fed comes up to me and he's like, hey, like, um, I just want you to know, like, you, you're my best friend. And I was like, oh, wow, that's like a really, um, that's really, like, really nice. You know, I, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't feel the same way, honestly, because like I had been, like, I can't feel like I'm a best friend to someone who, like, I haven't been fully honest with in terms of like, I had that resentment towards him and I had kept my distance, but he's like, you're my best friend. And I was like, wow, thanks, Fed. It's really sweet. And then he goes, thank you. Thank you so much for being so cool and never getting mad at me. And I was like, ah. I didn't realize in the moment what what the hell that's like a super toxic thing to say to somebody but he's like yeah thank you thank you for never getting mad at me and i was like yeah dude uh i got you right uh, i'm cool yeah and then i was like walking and i just thought I, I it didn't settle well with me so i told edison and i'm like edison like is that is that normal to say to somebody um and he's like dude leslie that's like super toxic to say to somebody because think about it like if someone says thank you for never getting mad at me it means like it's encouraging you to never bring things up with them. Like I realized like, as, he's like, thanks for being so cool for never getting mad at me. That means like in the future, if I get mad at you, 
is that am i no longer cool to you like right like is so he, it's like if you want to stay my best friend essentially like never get mad at me you're so cool for never getting mad you're my best friend leslie right like that's like the gist of it that's what i was feeling but i wasn't able to like i wasn't able to process what that meant because he said it in such a loving situation and like i don't know so that had also like been something i this is something i forgot to say to him because i had i'd written down my thoughts to talk to him but when i'm staring at him face to face i was like unable to recall things so i was just like kind of just reading what i had written down so that one i didn't get to say to him because and also i didn't remember at the time yeah anyway so edison told me that and then i was like okay kind of like note that that's super toxic um okay um and then like there's a lot of small little incidents but like those two are the ones that really kind of stand out to me um what uh one time i was in the just friends house uh, and I was changing and yeah, I was changing and apparently like Kimmy uh, fed was in Kimmy's room like um, in the back house area and like you could see me apparently so apparently fed saw me changing uh, And stuff and instead of like just looking away He like notifies Kimmy that I'm changing and then is like she's changing like what? Anyway, so and then makes the point to like come over back to our place, my room, and like tell me that he saw me changing and stuff. And and I don't know, maybe I've talked about this on stream and like think about the way I shared it. I was like, ha, like Fed saw me changing, lol. Oh my god, just that's so funny, Fed. Like, you know what I mean? Uh the way we like, if you go back on so many of these like clips and stuff, the way we like we make excuses for it all and um rephrase things. I, I have talked about this, right? Because I think I was just like, oh my god, Fed saw me changing, lol, Fed, you know, um, but it was weird. Like, that's a weird thing. And it made me uncomfortable to like, for him to talk about seeing me without a top on. Like, I was just like, don't, don't say that. Don't say that. It's weird. Like, I was like, what did he see? Like, you know, like, I, I just instantly got insecure, like, about just him seeing me like that. I just didn't want that. So that was just something I noticed. Like, why would he bring it up? It's okay if maybe he glanced over and like, oh my gosh, windows are open. But like, turn away. Don't bring attention to it. Don't tell Kimmy. Don't bring it up to me later. Or like, maybe bring it up to me later and say you're super, super, super sorry. But the way he brought it up was like in a humorous, like, ha. And uh, it just made me feel very uncomfortable. So that was that. Um, and then I, I've told this st story on stream as well, because once again, I'm always like, ha, fed story, another fed story. But this one was like, um, one time he was like insanely drunk at the offline TV house at his birthday. And, um, he's, I, I'm going down the stairs as he's coming up the stairs and he's like falling over. Like he can't stand, he can't do anything. So I'm like, fed, where are you going? He's like, I need to go to the bathroom. So he's trying to go to the bathroom. So I'm like, I walk him up to the bathroom. I'm like, yeah, let's go do, 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 do. We go to the bathroom i walk him into the bathroom and like he just just pees just like no no hesitation just starts peeing in front of me and of course at the time i'm like he's drunk and it's not intentional and i still this is still in my mind a minor story that i like don't think too much of because i'm just like i just think that you know but it it is weird that he just like no other of my friend guy friends i have had many guy friends in my life I, none of them have ever peed in front of me drunk or not like they they just haven't when i think about a lot of these stories i'm like <laughs> it just has like no no other guys have done this <laughs> so why fed you know um and then i hear that like fed has peed in front of multiple multiple girls <laughs> so anyways they just peed in front of me and i was like bro bro and i just like ran out the door and just like waited um so and then i told the story in a very light fashion like ha ha fed peed in front of me ha but um when i was confronting him about it he actually brought it up to me and he was i was like there's a story he's like is this the, is this where i peed in front of you and i was like actually it isn't i was gonna talk about a different story but we'll get to that <laughs> and then so he he was aware that it was weird and that it was something i was gonna i was gonna bring up yeah um yeah so yeah i guess it's just uh once again it's the just fed things uh very recurring thing um and i think a recurring thing with all of this is that the reason i didn't want to bring it up as an issue to people to fed to otv is because i didn't want to break apart like his like uh okay how do i describe it okay so um you know how everyone has always been like fed is such a good friend fred fed fred fed does this he he organizes everything at edc he like 
you know, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it organizes all these things at EDC. He pays for everything. Oh my gosh, fed, fed, fed. What a good friend, right? And so that's like the echoing statement that everyone's hearing. So, um, um, and, 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 and I was putting out there because I'm like, fed, oh man, I've never met someone who makes me feel so high and so low at the same time. It's crazy. It's like this, like my feelings with him. I'd feel so incredibly like, cared for by him and he would pay so much attention and then the next month you're you're nobody to him ignored not one message from him you'd send him a message nothing back um you know and i'm like wow i just i i felt like weirdly like dependent on his attention at some points and when i talk to the other girls it's very similar it's very similar like emotions and it's so weird i can't describe it um so that was something that yeah that i yeah i felt like if he didn't because he literally would make a habit of just coming over to this house or wherever i or other girls were living just walk in and he'd do that maybe every day for like or every other day for like weeks and then he'd just stop and you couldn't help thinking is there something wrong with me did i bore him did i like am i like just you know just i did i get just thrown out like you know he moved and then you'd find out he just went to another girl's house all the time and or you know and you just wouldn't really you would start to think like am i crazy uh i guess i just I'm not important in his life anymore um so so that um that sucks uh that sucked um and so yeah that this was ex especially prominent i don't know if you guys remember the vlog he was vlogging a lot and there's a vlog period where he's at our house all the time you'll see it uh, if you go to his vlog channel um it's just like i'm in a lot of the thumbnails it's just a bunch of that he was here all the time and then as soon as otv got their new house um he he just um he he just stopped coming over he's and he stopped messaging me he stopped talking to me and i was going crazy i was like wow am i literally only in fed's life when he needs me for or wants me for content that that is it and i was i remember thinking wow like to myself holding all these thoughts only to myself i vented to edison and that's it because i didn't want to put an ounce of negativity about fed out into the group for fear it would get back to him back to otv and they would just be like yeah you know we can't deal with drama you're out we don't want to talk to you anymore just the fear of all this right and so i'm like i don't want to be problematic i just you know I, I don't have any issues so um yeah but then actually peter uh, he he brought it up as as he had similar feelings in a way um and then i was like oh my gosh okay i'm not crazy and so i like vented to him about how i just felt like basically just like a piece of meat like, a, like in terms of the like content just like there when i'm in fun like good for content uh and and if i'm not helping that then i'm not a friend to him i'm not i'm nobody i even messaged him at one point and he didn't respond and I was just like, okay, I get it. Like, I'm just, I'll just be here when I'm there, I guess. And at that point, I think January, February, 2020, this year? Holy shit, was it this year? Is it this year? Oh yeah, this year. I decided that I was just gonna take a step back, not care about Fed, just just push back, or just, just stop caring, let him do his thing and not like be dependent on any sort of interaction with him at all. Um, and, but that, and I told Yvonne, she was the only other person that I had told. I went to NorCal and we hung out at the mall and I confided in her and she's like, you're not crazy, Leslie. Um, you're, like Fed has like, there's so many issues going on that we don't know how to address. And that it just, it, it, it been clear that, that there are so many things with him. Um, and yeah. And so it was a lot of fear from everyone about breaking the peace. Um, and um you know it's like if things go bad with fed then like what happens fed leaves otv otv like what happens like those thoughts um were like terrifying like you don't want to be that reason that this amazing group of content creators like has any problems so so i was very um yeah so i was very like cautious about that um anyways so that's so that was just a side journey i had with him or just a timeline of my feelings and obviously oh gosh it feels so good to say this because because i haven't i haven't this is obviously stuff I'm, I would never speak on on stream ever. I would never say a bad word about Fed publicly because, 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 you know, you don't want to put that out there and get clipped and people are like, oh, shoot, Leslie said this about Fed. Okay, drama, you know. So I just feel, I feel, I feel a little, I feel good being able to say it. I feel bad, but good. Like, I, it's really sad that this is, this is where it's at. 
Um, thanks for sharing. Yeah, no, thanks for listening. Um, uh, yeah, side, side little things he'd do. I noticed just habits of his. Every time he was over, he'd just pick up my phone and start scrolling through it, scrolling through my pictures, scrolling through my texts. Um, and then I'd go grab my phone from him and he'd be like, what? And I'm like, can I have my phone? And he's like, or if I, my phone was password locked, usually he'd just like point the phone at my face so I could, um, so I could unlock. Hey, Peter. So I can unlock. I'm really proud of you. <sighs> yeah. I was all like, really nervous to no, speak. I wrote it good. all down in a stupid doc. Yeah, so he would he would point my phone at his face if you want to pull up a seat. You totally can. Do you want coffee? Uh, coffee. coffee. Do you want to coffee? Sure, yeah, I'd love. Uh, that's totally not the reason why I came in here. <laughs> um, so, um, I don't know if the music's too loud. Sorry. Okay. So yeah, he would uh, he would pick up my phone. I really like, he pick up my phone and he'd point it at my face so I would unlock the phone for him. And at, at first I was like, sure. So I just do it. And then I would be like, wait, wait, what is he looking through? Why is he going through my text? Why is he just picking up my phone? Like I don't have anything to hide, you know? Well, sometimes, okay. <laughs> Anyways, but um, it's, oh, am I qu quiet all of a sudden? How about now? Sorry, I just switched my mic uh, so it can pick up Peter. It might be a little bit airy. It's okay. I don't really have much to say, to be honest, other than just like corroborating how you feel. And like, there was that one time that, you know, right after they moved in, mm -hmm. uh, it was like, went from seeing Fed like almost every day to every other day to like, not at all. And then it was a weird feeling of not knowing if we did something wrong mm -hmm. or if they were just burned out by us. And it felt bad to like reach out because we didn't want to seem like clingy, I guess. And um, so we were just kind of, I, I personally felt like we were just like up in the air because it really literally went, well, imagine like you had this really good friend and then one day they just stopped talking to you completely. And then you're just, you're like not really sure why. And then there's like a kind of, you know, there is like a bit of like a power dynamic because you know, offline TV is really, really popular and they're really successful and you don't want to like come off as like, like when you mix like business with friendship and stuff like this, it gets really complicated. Like you just want to play it safe, don't want to like, to overstep any boundaries and like potentially harm any relationships. I know that sounds like really f fucked up in a way because like you shouldn't have to worry about these things when you're friends with these people. But in reality, it's like it's just something that's like on the back of our, of our mind as we are navigating like being streamers and being friends at the same time. So I just remember being in the kitchen with Leslie and being like, hey man, um, I feel like I'm going crazy, but like, do you feel like like they've he yeah. just kind of went like zero, like zero word, like just complete silence on us, just like all out of nowhere. And then Liz was like, yes, I was just talking about this with Edison. <laughs> like literally we were like ta thinking about these things at the same yeah. time. But then I thought I was going crazy. Leslie thought she was going crazy. We didn't say but anything. Then, like, and then we just I had my school. girlfriend to talk. I had no one to talk to about these things. And then <laughs> Leslie had Edison to talk to. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So like, it, like I look. My feelings on Fed are very complicated because as a guy, um, that was not like within his inner circle of like guy friends, I would say. Like I was, I only got to see a side of Fed. Mm. You know what I mean? And that side of Fed, I really appreciated, you know? Um, he like, you know, like Leslie was saying, like he knows how to make you feel special. Like if he gives you that attention, like like he knows how to gas you up and stuff. And then like, but then there are times where there's just like, there's complete droughts, you know? But that is, you know, I, I still had a really good support system and like, I didn't consider fr Fed like within my like really, really close fr like group of friends for me personally. Okay, the, the exact, so my problem personally was that he would keep me in his close group by telling me things like, you're my best friend. But like he would, the actions he would share in those like moments, he'd like literally tell me these really powerful words that would make me like, be like, okay, then, act like it, then show me, right? Uh, and I would then try to reciprocate, like I wanna be close. I'd share really personal things. He would share things that maybe he shouldn't have shared, but so that's why it felt toxic to me. When I look back at it, why did I feel like, like why did it matter that he stopped talking to us all of a sudden, just stopped coming over as soon as like the vlog content was done? Because you just felt like you got wrung out like a towel. Like I was like, yeah. wait a minute. Like I literally felt like used. It did feel like a unhealthy dynamic. And like, honestly, like, it is partially my fault too that I put that kind of expectation onto Fed, like obviously, but then it did sometimes feel like um, we could, we were like left out to dry. But um, that's not like just on him, obviously. Like I uh, think it's more, it's not just black and white like that, but I agree. there were times where it just, it really felt like I had a unhealthy like association. And that, and it only felt better for me personally when I was like, I kept, 
like that relationship at like arm's length, if that makes sense. Yeah, this but, is, um, yeah. it's all um, really tricky. I understand the idea, like people are like, oh, you, you guys should keep this private and stuff. Um, you, you guys saw what happened when we tried to protect him. Like when, like people, like when, we, like you, you saw, <laughs> and I knew that Toast had talked to Fed a year ago and that his behavior didn't change, even though like, and he re like he lashed out a year ago. Um, and then following the intervention directly, he showed behavior like, people already talked about this, but like that he, he showed no change instantly. Like he, we, we try to bring as many people to the intervention because we wanted to prevent him from running because he has this habit of when, like he would run to me. You guys remember that time on the offline TV podcast when like they, like they said something to Fed and he got triggered like, and he came, he called me on stream crying and he put me in a really hard situation because like, he's like, crying to me and i'm like hey fed i'm streaming he goes i know keep streaming and i'm like what and he's like they make me feel like shit yada 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 right and so i'm in this really awkward situation of having to to comfort him but also on the other side otv's like please end the stream please stop talking please like and i'm just like i felt so upset and i so i just said hey please can you like i, I have to go you know i forgot how i ended that but i was in such an awkward situation in that point and i was really mad at him for putting me in that situation for seeing that i was on stream calling me putting in me, me in that situation um and, and stuff like that right and he, he has a, a thing for going to run like at the just friends house like we knew he would come to our house all the time always in a bad mood and it was always because we I, it was like oh fed's over stuff with uh, Pokey or OTV is like not good right now. Like that was it, he would run away. He would run away constantly. And then while he's there, he's like, like just spreading bad vibes about OTV, which would st slowly start to push us away from them. I'd start to have these really negative thoughts about Pokey. Like I was, I really thought like, wow, like she's driving him crazy, poor guy. Like, man, like, you know, I, I, I had all these negative thoughts about her and I apologized to her directly about like not t talking to her in the moment. Uh, uh, instead just believing everything Fed was saying because at the moment Fed is my close close friend, you know, and so He like yeah, and so if you're wondering why a lot of this stuff had to be aired publicly um, And it's because that was the only way we'd see Fed change because we had tried to address things publicly um, And instantly with the intervention he went running to all the people who weren't at the intervention um, victimizing himself and like yeah, and yeah, I, I don't know where, what my place is to say actually, so I'm not gonna say it and, um, more so, but like there's a reason it had to be aired. And, yeah. and in this moment, I didn't know what of my story that I felt like I didn't wanna add poor gasoline, but I talked to Skara, I talked to the girls, I talked to um, people, I asked them, should I just say nothing or should I say my side? And then they said like, anything that will help you gain closure here um, is your right to say, anything that you think, yeah. And so I'm sorry if I'm like saying too much or I'm sorry if that the, for making like okay. fuel this to is, the fire. Don't feel guilty about that. I just want to be done with this after. I just want to say my piece. It's been, yeah, and I don't, yeah, at the same time I like, man, like I, uh, I feel really bad about it. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, we like, we care about him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just hard because yeah. we hoped that it wouldn't have to come to this yeah. because you know you guys were talking about like you guys gave him the private intervention yeah. and we're hoping that you could see some change happen from there but um like that's just not how it, it panned out unfortunately yeah so i hope you guys aren't seeing this as like a oh we're just gonna shit on fed because we feel good about shitting on fed it's just important because a lot of these experiences have gone silent like no one knew like you guys heard where like they had that girls night out and then they, each of those girls had That's their own weird. private issue that they had with Fed that they didn't know that the others were experiencing. Yeah. So it's important that like, you know, these things come to light and that like to potentially warn others of like this sort of behavior, you know what I mean? So it's not, it's not, it's not just to like, like farm the drama. I mean. I, I hate being involved. Like I know that everyone involved in drama, I get massive anxiety. Like I don't want to speak on things. My initial gut was like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to post a statement. I'm just going to retweet my friends, reply to them with lots of love because that's what, you know, but I don't want to speak on it because I'm terrible. And I, my, I get so much anxiety thinking about someone like clipping my words and being like, you know, oh, she said this. 
um, and then just making it worse. Yeah. Um, so I, I talked to multiple people before I said anything just to be like, is it, is this a good idea? Is it okay? And they was, they were like very reassuring, um, that it, it should be okay. And like that I should be able to say my piece on it. Yeah. I mean, Leslie has been going back and forth on this for like a long time where she's like, I don't know, should I tell him something? Should I talk about this? I don't know. Like, I just, you know, I feel like this, this bothers me a lot, but I don't know if I should talk about this. I've been talking like, honestly, this is how you feel you should you really should talk about this. But like, we really have been, they, I mean, I can't, I won't say we, because I personally haven't been affected by Fed on the level that they have for sure. But like, they have been really trying hard to protect Fed and look out for his best interest and really try to solve this behind the scenes. But it just, it just didn't work out. Um, and then the last thing that he, I just want to touch on one more thing he did that um, I was a witness to, um, but it really disturbed me. Um, so, uh, we went to um, an event. I don't know if I'm because I'm not going to include the girl's name because uh, I didn't ask for her permission. We went to an event. Um, you know, we, we Fed likes to plan like when we go to like a rave and stuff. So we went to a rave, and Fed a couple days before the rave, he's like on his phone and he's like showing me this a streamer and he's like, "Dude, what do you think?" I'm like, "What do you mean? What do you think?" Like, she's like pretty, right? And I'm like, "Yeah, she's she's pretty." And then he's like, okay, like we're talking. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, and he's like, yeah, we played league, played this, whatever, you know. I'm like, okay, cool, 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 right? Um, you know, hope things don't work out. Like, I, I don't know, just showed him that I, she's pretty, I guess he wanted like approval. So then he, um, we, we all plan to go to this rave together. So um, when we get to the rave or to the Airbnb, he, um, he has show, he shows up with uh, this girl and he basically, um, we didn't know she was coming. And we're like, oh, she's here. And he's like, oh yeah, I last minute invited her. Is that cool? I'm like, yeah, sure, that's fine. Like, yeah, like, uh, okay, cool, hey, you know? So she's she's with us. Um, and I'm trying to say this without saying her name. I'm gonna leak something. I'm just trying to keep it vague. But um, so she's with us and we, uh, she was fun. We we're just like chilling and stuff. Um, we go to the rave the first night and um, Basically, I think that's where like uh, they like I don't want to say too much. Okay, they were like trying things out, but it didn't work apparently. Or yeah, so what I Fed comes to my room right before I fall asleep, um, and he's like, "Hey, by the way, like um, things with this girl, like I don't like her anymore. Like she, she's like not like he immediately starts bashing her name, and I'm like, well, what? What things didn't work out? He's like, Yeah, I'm not into her at all. And I'm like, Okay, okay, that that's 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 fine. Sometimes things don't work out. And he's like, Yeah, just yeah, I'm just. Uh, so he's like, She's weird. He starts like attacking her like character and like making her seem really weird. And I was like, Okay, uh, well, what do we do? She's here with us. And he's like, uh, I'm just gonna like pretty much like not talk to her. And I'm like, Oh. Oh, so you're gonna just like, yeah. So he ghosts her for the rest of the weekend in person. He stops talking to her entirely, avoids her. Um, we're in the same Airbnb the whole weekend. Like, this is his guest. He So all of a sudden she's like clinging to us and she's like, hey, and she's being cool and stuff. We're like, hey, I'm like, I don't know you that well, but like, you know what, I'll be your friend because I see that the person who brought you here is completely ignoring you. So I was like, this is so rude, right? Am I crazy? I just felt like it was so rude. Um, and I, I kept the thoughts to myself because I was like, whatever i was just like you know what i'll just hang out with her for now and she just she made friends with everyone um and then on the very the last day um it's morning and everyone's checking out um me and edison are running around picking up things that we like left or just making sure everything was good before checkout and we go downstairs and so we said bye a lot of people said bye we go downstairs and like everyone is gone including fed and like his guest is there and she's like can i get a ride and i'm like yeah, of course you can get a ride. And I'm like, why would you leave her here? Why would you leave before the girl you invited? What? I remember that. It was so rude. And I, that was something that hella triggered me. I was like, sure. So I drove, me, me and Edison drove her down um, and we dropped her off at this place and then she got picked up and made sure she had a ride and everything. But like, I was like, dude, <laughs> if that doesn't show you like, how poorly he treated someone like uh, and 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 the, i think the frustrating thing is that he would continuously like get away with these things like very easily get off with things and everyone would just excuse his behavior and stuff because he pays for the he paid for the escape uh oh well, i never said it was escape <laughs> paid for the escape <laughs> okay you 
were so close. I know. We whatever. So close. Okay. Whatever. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so close. I was like, dude, she's doing a pretty good job. No there it is. <laughs> okay. Whatever. It was a rat escape, but. <laughs> It's just frustrating, okay? So that that was something that irked me for a long time. I did bring it up, and yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. not mentioning who it was, and so that that's really it, and that's all I want to speak on for for me personally. Um, I didn't have any like super like you know. Um, I would say my my stories are a lot tamer, um, but I guess I just want to get off my chest. That's it. Um, it's we it's a weird situation because um you know fed. I don't know, like, I don't know where to go from here. And yeah. It's just like, um, just for people that in our friend group are just dropping like flies, and I'm like, but yeah, it's, <laughs> where did you, why? <laughs> it's been really rough on our mental lately, as you could probably clearly tell. Like, just a lot of anxiety, a lot of sadness. Um, I think right now it's really important to um, support the victims, for sure. Yes. I think Yvonne and Lily have been incredibly brave going forward, <laughs> along with like a lot of the other stories going up. Um, I actually am really pissed off at so how some people have decided to react to their yes. stories, to them coming out and telling their side. Yes. It just goes to show that this issue is like systemic and like really ingrained yes. in people and that like protecting a reputation, protecting a career is far more important than uh, like hearing the stories of those who have been abused. So, um, like, even if, yeah. even if we did go for, go through the methods that people have been suggesting, why didn't she just do it privately? Why didn't she just do it privately? It's like, they tried, they, they really tried. Like, I don't, you, you saw, like, they tried it like a long time ago through Toast and they did it recently too. And they all came together to show collectively that was a big issue in our friend group. So, um, they really did try and it came from a place of like, they really were just concerned, you know? Man, yeah, it's just, it's crazy to see the amount of people who think like, they like know a situation and can judge the situation from when there's like, I'm looking at the situation from people on the inside, like that, like who are going through this. And then people who are just like speculating, oh, that was the wrong way to handle it. Why don't, why don't you guys just do this pub privately? What's wrong with you guys? But you didn't understand, you, like it, there's just a lot of so armchair analysts. Stuff. There's a, it's a lot more like with all the stuff that we've already said. There's still like way more nuance and things behind the scene that you guys still don't know. Yeah. Like, please let me just like reiterate what Ludwig, Ludwig said the other day. Oh, yeah, it's like yeah. this is a paras <laughs> this is a parasocial relationship. Like, you guys don't know us the way you think you actually know us. This is like a one sided thing. Like, we're not your friends. We are your entertainers at the end of the day. I know that sounds really harsh, but like, you don't know us as people you can't speak for us you can't assume like i'm i'm seeing a lot of oh i mean i think x is a really good person like at the end of the day and it's just like it's like look man like you really can't speak for them and also i'm seeing a lot of people apologizing for the victims like when you are not involved at all like it's just mind-boggling it's crazy to me and it's just I think it just kind of speaks to, to the immaturity as a whole, you know? Like, I will, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like, with all these stories coming out, like, I'm still getting educated, I'm still listening, I'm still hearing, but it's just like, it's shocking how close-minded people can be about this whole situation, about not listening to the victims, not hearing their side, so. Oh, sorry, So, just like, it's just crazy how much, like, gaslighting, like, backstabbing, like, things that will happen just to just protect someone. And their reputation even if they don't deserve it because at the end of the day i think if we all truly care about fed we want fed to be the best guy that he can be you know like we want him to change and grow from this and like i mean we all just want that right so yeah. and part of that unfortunately means holding him accountable for these things that he's been perp perpetrating you know and it sucks because i've only seen one side of fed you know what I mean? And I really like that side. But like, mm -hmm. when the, my friends are all coming out with their stories, their horror stories that, they, that they're that they experiencing with him, it's just like, I how can I support that, you know? And like, I trusted them to like, try and deal with it the way they wanted to, and they tried, and it just didn't work out. So like, please be mindful of that, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, after Pokey's thing, I was, oh, I was like, my God. Like, some of the stories that she had, the things that she had to go through, I'm yeah. sorry, I, I could not. Can I just say that Pokey has been incredibly like patient and strong and understanding through like this, like she has gotten so much hate and so much of a bad rep like throughout the years for things that you guys will never fully even understand. And she has just kept quiet about to protect people. 
Okay, she has and to be professional. So much, so much to like, yeah, they're, it's crazy. Oh, she's a queen. She's yeah. been, and personally, she's been really helpful during all of this. She's like, helped me find the words to say, help, like made this easier for me to speak on, for us to speak on. She's been so supportive and yeah. like, she had to speak in front of so many people yesterday with like such personal like yeah. information that uh, I just she was like ra like she her, the volume of her voice went up a little and she's like I'm so sorry <laughs> oh, for no, getting emotional I, I was just like no dude no, but you got what... you do what you gotta do like I can't believe you're apologizing for like the volume no. of your voice going up like a little that's it's crazy because people won't listen to you when like emotion like once you start crying it's like people like so many people on the internet like oh women she had to give like as little reasons as possible for people to dismiss her side like because otherwise other people are like oh yeah she's just a woman she's yeah, just she's being so emotional. emotional like it's, she's erratic you know it's a serious thing she like, had the most like calmly delivered just like rational just from her point of view situate of everything and like it gave such good perspective of what's been happening over the years yeah she had been through so much so yeah at the end of the day send lots of love to um you know all of our friends at otv uh, especially yvonne lily and pokey and and um it's been oh and and seeing like how um, amazing like uh, everyone else at otv has been like as a support system for them too has yeah. been it's oh, been really, really, really amazing. Huge shout out to the guys at OTV too. Like Fed. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> Toast, Scara, and Michael. I My brain just. Okay. Toast, Scara, and Michael have been amazing support system to the people there. That's going to get clipped out of context for sure. But whatever. But, uh, but like. You're so used to I've, it. I've been talking to Scara over the past couple days and he's he's been like. That's going to get. <laughs> just, I'm scared. No, no, I'm just keep talking. You're fine. So. No, but they've been taking it really hard. Like, I know it doesn't show as much. Actually, I was watching Toast stream yesterday, oh and God. he got really emotional on stream. And you know that Toast doesn't really get emotional, especially on stream very often. So, like, you could tell this affected him really deeply. And, like, I've been talking to Scar over the past couple days because, like, everyone knows Scar to be, like, that bastion of strength. Like, immovable. Just cannot... But, like, I have never seen him more just upset, disappointed, and sad than in the past, like, week. And I, it's just, it's, it's really, um, it's disheartening, for sure. <sighs> I have to go through so much. Remember there was a time when everything was drama-free and there was no... Yeah, I mean, like, if this, in an alternate universe, like, there would be no pandemic. <laughs> There would be no like crazy social movements, but I think it's important that we talk about these things. Yeah, I think it sheds a lot of light on like how fame um, and like um, internet, well, internet fame and like uh, power and money can like kind of it's really strong stuff. It can mess you up. Yeah. Because somewhere along the lines, like I don't know what where Fed went. Like I don't know. Like I I know he was always like content content like you know he was the content king you know um but somewhere along the lines like he he got lost and like my first thing that i said to him was i am so sorry for not like saying this to you right when it happened like for for instead suppressing it because i just wanted the peace i didn't want to be problematic with everyone and so that was the first thing i said to him and i i, I still stand by that like but like at some point, like something happened, and um, and yeah, his mind became all content, and like and um, yeah, he got lost along the way. But I think important from here is that he gets help, and, yeah. and, and that he is getting help. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I firmly believe in rehabilitation mm -hmm. through personal growth. Yeah. Um. So like, I care about Fed. I hope I hope he really learns and grows from this. I like everyone is sad that it had to go this way. Like no one is rejoicing over this. So it's just, it's a, it's a really sad circumstance for sure. But like, we're just hoping for his overall growth. <sighs> I think it's just important overall to keep each other accountable. Yes, so. yes, yes. It yeah. makes me think like, tell me when I'm being a bad friend, please tell me when I'm like- Stop making me order so much Starbucks. I'm just kidding. Oh, but no, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What? I've never asked you to. Is I would never gaslight you. 
Where's the Starbucks? Is it coming? To I don't know. They, they said order is out for delivery. You, you need your shit, Ooh. huh? No, no, I just. Yeah. Where's that? Uh, where's the Starbucks? Uh, no. Yeah, communicate. This is. I hope I'm that. I'm still thinking about how I'm gonna get canceled because they're what? gonna clip just that part. Shout out to the homie. <laughs> Boom. Done. It's because we said fed like a hundred times in a row and like. Okay. Uh, I'm scared. It's it's over. It's okay. Yeah. It's uh. I think I hope that you guys at home can maybe it's a lesson for you guys to be healthy in your in your communication with with your friends too when things are rough. Like I always it felt like as I was literally talking to Fed and then telling him my problems, I was like, holy crap! Like why don't I just do this? More Already often? on LSF. Not not even surprised, honestly. Commu um, communicate easy, like communicate more often. So I think it just and then yeah. Um, I think yeah. I saw a tweet the other day from. Do you know who Hugo is? Hugs. He's a Smash streamer, or he's a Smasher. Um, Smasher. Okay. Or he plays Smash uh, Sm competitively, okay. and he tweeted out how he like admits that from a young age, men are like guys are taught that persistence is really a par important part of romance. But like, that's kind of like a toxic mentality or around like how flirting and all that shit works. Yeah. So like. We have to, yeah, I think there's like a lot of just fucked up shit that guys are taught is like okay in terms of like what it comes to like consent, so. Yeah. Like it's it's good to like be self-reflective and just try to learn from oh, this. Oh, there's so many problems, like so many deep-rooted, so much misogyny in like society. It's actually crazy. Yesterday I had a serious talk with Edison about like misogynistic jokes that like I even participate in. Like I'll, he'll like jokingly tell me to go back to the kitchen and I'm like, or I'll say like, yeah, I'm in the kitchen where I belong. And then I'm like, fuck, why did I say that? And so I literally sat down, I was like, Edison, I'm, I am no longer, I'm gonna, I need to stop. You can't expose yeah. Edison, yeah. like no, you just know, expose Edison. No, it's okay because I'm the problem too. Like I have literally been like that to myself to like as a defense mechanism. Like if I'm misogynistic to myself, they can't do it to me first kind of thing. Like if I already make the joke, it's like you know the joke is coming, so you say it first. So it's kind of like that. So I've been conditioned and also I had really toxic friends in college who would constantly do this to me. My ex constantly, literally like his on a recurring joke you was just... like, I was like, tell me a funny joke. And instead of saying like your career or your stream, he would be like the 19th amendment, which is like women's rights. And I'd be like, okay, that's, you know, and I would just like, ha, government jokes, ha, right? So stuff like that has just been so deeply like rooted in like humor and society and stuff. So I actually was, I had a really like serious talk with Edison and said like, I really, I just don't want any of that anymore. And he said a hundred percent, like, I, I like, I won't. And I was like, no. yeah, me either. Like, I won't also go along with it. Just because there's so many problems, like just, and, and it's like, I don't know, we just joke about all these effed up things and com communication, yeah. And it's like an awkward conversation to have at first, uh, but I was like. You just canceled me and Edison in like one single 10 minute. But, but how stream. did I cancel you? Oh, you I mean, canceled, canceled yourself. myself. You canceled sorry. yourself, dude. You, by you going live, I, you canceled me. I mean, that's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Um, I think I'm also realizing that a lot of like what humor was growing up was saying the most fucked up thing you could think of. Like literally just being edgy was humor. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you start to realize like, wait, that's like such a cop out way to be funny. You know what I mean? Like it's, there's so many, so many better ways to actually be humorous now and like a lot of people are thinking like oh wow like everyone's so sensitive now it's like yeah maybe just like using humor at the expense of like the marginalized and the oppressed is like maybe that should just not fly yeah, anymore yeah, you know what i mean like, like maybe change. that maybe that should just not be okay yeah, anymore yeah <laughs> so um it's okay to like change like th like things things are like this is how the world gets better you know like it's all this stuff and then we realize wait a minute this is wrong and we work to change and it's awkward for people who are like no i don't want to change and people fight against it and stuff but but slowly it we make a difference and you know we we stop those women in the kitchen jokes okay yeah anyways <laughs> yeah um but yeah i mean like overall i think it's really it was really brave of everyone I'm just trying to push right past what you just said, you know what I mean? I think it's, it's really brave of all the, the victims so far that have uh, come Maybe. forward with their stories. It's it's really hard. As it, like as you could obviously see, the amount of backlash they received just by telling their perspective on everything, it just goes to show like how difficult it is for victims to speak up on their stories. So just please be supportive. Like I, saw, I talked about this on my stream that like, I don't think anyone should be blindly believed, but like everyone should at least be heard. You know what I mean? Like some people are so willing to just 
immediately dismiss someone's story just because like you know they're a woman or like oh they're they're just doing they're clout chasing but like because there have been examples very recently that people are willing to use this me too movement in order to like further their own agenda to like protect their own reputation and potentially ruin lives like that it's totally a valid criticism but like at the same time it's like you can't dismiss all these cases of people getting sexually abused you know what i mean you cannot yeah. Leslie's molding right now. I am molding. She's molding right it's now. Like that, stuff like that is so damaging. It literally gives other people reasons to discredit future assault victims. Like, <laughs> holy crap. I'm just laughing because it's... Leslie was literally typing up a tweet. She's like, Peter, I'm fucking pissed. I am so fucking mad right now. I cannot believe I was manipulated. Peter, I'm going to tweet this shit right now. I don't give a fuck. And he's like, okay, okay. I was like, hey, I was like, hey, hey, hey. You know what? Chill. Relax. Drop I told, it. I, the no, I get, like, listen. I hear where you're coming from. I hear where you're coming from. I'm pissed too. But listen, Put in, the in, in, in like the one, the point one percent possibility that you are wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do know. not want this situation turn on you. So just put in the drafts. Just, just leave that there for a bit. Yeah. You know, just wait it out. Dude. Just wait, and then you know, just think about it. Yeah. So and then she never. She's like, all right, all right. I never sent it. She dropped it in the drafts. Never sent it. And then like, I don't think you needed to send it. Anymore, I didn't. Right? Yeah, people went in and did did the work for me. Yeah. I didn't need to add on. At one point, at some point, it's like I don't know if it's like, like they like, got it. At a certain point, it like, becomes bullying, I guess. Yeah. Like, so yeah. Just, I just feel like I don't think you're saying it. just like like. Yeah, yeah. Just toss them a like. Just I just I just liked a bunch of tweets and. Hopefully she said what well, I was gonna say, but better. Yeah, like exactly. So I just, I, I actually had like five or six. Oh man, she was fucking. Well. I had not seen Leslie this pissed in like. Holy crap. A minute. Uh, I was so mad, but just to like lightly touch on that because I'm balding over it. Um, <laughs> I have a per <laughs> I have a personal situation with this because um, the girl involved, the Jasmina. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. She DM'd me Tuesday, it's five days ago, de essentially demanding an apology, saying like, you hurt me so bad three years ago when you refused to hear me out. And I gave her the most heartfelt apology I could. I sat there and I told Peter, I was like, I am a bad person. I'm a bad person for not hearing her out three years ago. And for I was, yeah, I was trying to explain, I was like, look, listen, like you only knew one side and like, it's, don't worry, like, you could, like, I, apologize to her, like, you could make it right. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, I read it, too, and I was just, like, it was kind of like a, there were some gaps in the story. I don't really know much about it, but, like, I'm hearing her perspective. I was like, oh, man, that does sound like a pretty shitty situation. Yeah. And then... Yeah, and she and was then, referring to me in the article as, I'm in the group of girls that, like, really hurt her when they didn't hear her out. I was that I was one of them. I knew when I was reading it that I was being, like, I my, my guilt, like, I was, like, wow, like, I'm a... I'm that person, I'm that bad friend when I was reading it. Cause I had forgotten really, I had suppressed a lot. I just knew back then I got her question was character. Her question was character. Her character was questioned. And I, I was like, I want none, nothing to do with this girl after what I'm hearing, I'm out. <laughs> so I just, I just, sorry, got the whole shark tank. And with that, I'm out. <laughs> okay, sorry, I dipped, I dipped. I was like, I'm not, I don't need, I don't, I don't need, I don't need this. And then, um, so I, <laughs> <laughs> you had watched a lot of Shark Tank, dude. So I, 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 I stopped being her friend back then. And then All right, let me get your coffee. Oh, woo! Anyway, so uh, then... Cancel me a second time. So she messaged me uh, I, and asked her for, for an apology. And I gave her I gave her apology. I told her I fully 100% believe your story. I am, a, I am so sorry that I did that. And I hope this gives you closure. I poured my heart out to her. Um, I said, like, I'm so sorry. I was such a bad friend to you. And uh, yeah, like I had not, I just, I just said sorry. And then to see the 55 page receipt that in response, I, I was fuming. Like I could not believe what I had been like swindled to think. Um, I go to block her and then she already like, she had already, or I went to unfollow her and she had already like soft blocked me and I was like, okay.